Hey guys, I'm John and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. At the time of making this video, which is April 2019, another new and pretty exciting scientific discovery has been made. We finally found the first type of molecule that formed after the Big Bang. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and let's get started. At the beginning of the universe, shortly after the Big Bang, there was only hydrogen, helium, and lithium atoms in existence. Because of this, we theorized that the first molecule that would have formed is an ion of hydrogen and helium bound together called hel helium hydride. Discovering this molecule is of fundamental importance in understanding the chemistry of the early universe, because it's what leads to the creation of other more complex molecules. This molecule is a positively charged ion, so it has one electron removed, and we were first able to produce this molecule in a lab in 1925. Once we gained the ability to produce it, we were able to discover that this molecule is only stable in isolation. It's so reactive that if it's not isolated, it will interact with any other molecule it comes into contact with. This makes it impossible to produce in bulk, and it also makes it the strongest acid in existence. In the 1970s, we theorized that this molecule should also exist in space, and it's in April of 2019 that we discovered it out in space for the first time, making it the first observation of the molecule without having been produced by us. We found it in the NGC 7027 Planetary Nebula, which is located about 3000 light years from Earth in the constellation Cygnus. This planetary nebula is one of the smallest, but it's by far the most extensively studied. The way we detected this was through the SOFIA Airborne Observatory. SOFIA stands for Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. It's an 80-20 joint venture between NASA and the German Aerospace Center. This observatory is on board of a modified Boeing 747 aircraft, and it was first started in 2010 to replace the Kuiper Airborne Observatory. Its goal is to observe celestial magnetic fields, star forming regions, comets, nebulae and the galactic center. The way it works is that a few times a week the aircraft takes off and climbs to about 12 kilometers of altitude. It has a large door that opens up when they reach that altitude and allows a large infrared telescope to watch the sky. This altitude and setup allows about 85% of the infrared spectrum to be visible because it's higher than the water vapor in the Earth's atmosphere. Otherwise, the water vapor would block a significant portion of the infrared spectrum due to its interaction with those wavelengths. Another thing that makes, it, uh, that makes this uh, observatory special is that it's not stationary. Since it's able to travel to just about any point on the Earth's uh, surface, it's able to observe both the northern and southern hemisphere skies uh, whenever it needs to. So why are we excited to have found this molecule out in space? Well, that's because, for one, we theorized its existence and our predictions were confirmed to be true, so that's always an exciting moment in science. Other than that, uh, knowing this molecule can exist out in space on its own without our interference means that we were correct about it being the very first type of molecule. That's because all there was in the universe uh, were the very light atoms of hydrogen, helium and lithium. Stars hadn't created metals yet through fusion or explosions as supernovae. The formation of this molecule also means by extension that it's the, the first step towards more complex molecules. There are a lot more steps in the chain of course, but as we discover more and more about the evolution of the chemistry of the universe, we may eventually be able to explain things like how DNA and therefore life first formed. Verifiable evidence of how life first formed would be a huge step up from the man-made creation stories. There's one thing that's important to note though. The, uh, the helium hydride we discovered is not one of the molecules from the very beginning of the universe. Those molecules are so reactive that the ones at the beginning of the universe were likely all destroyed as they interacted with other molecules. Even if some of them still exist, they'd be scarce enough that it would make it very unlikely that we'd ever detect it. Instead, we should concentrate on the fact that now we know that these molecules are capable of forming out in space on their own without our interference, and that now we can continue to develop the evolution chain of the universe's chemistry 
until we get something that could really change the way we view ourselves and our place in the universe. So this was a pretty short video, but I think it's important to talk about the developments in science regardless if it makes a long or short video. I was actually considering starting a series for scientific news where I pick the news that stands out to me the most and make a video about it. Uh, perhaps a, a science news video once or twice a week with some normal science video sprinkled in that you're already used to on this channel. That way you could be kept up to date with our discoveries. Is that something you'd be interested in? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like to learn more interesting science stuff, make sure to like, subscribe and click the bell notification. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can visit my Patreon page for more information. For everything else, you can go to respectyourintellect.com and everything will be available there. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.